The goal of this video is to show you how to calculate the vector components. So if I take a vector here, and let's say I put it in this position. <clears throat> now we know from reading this that it's 20i and 15j. Those are the components of the vector. So it's the effects of the vector. So look, if that was a mass or a, a weight or something like that, an object that we were basically pulling along, and that was the force we were exerting on it, that force would have two effects. That component would pull the force horizontally, and the vertical component would uh, try to lift it up or lighten it. It may not um, succeed in pulling it off the ground, but it would certainly make its contact between the ground and the particle um, less. So the components, when we put them in, should look like that. It's got a vertical effect, it's got a horizontal effect. And I move that there, like so. So now we have a right angle triangle. Now from that you should be able to calculate, um, using sine and cos, the magnitude of the two components of the vectors. <clears throat> now all you need is an angle and the size of the vector. So let me put in an angle, there we go. And the size of the vector there is this thing. The magnitude of the vector A is 25. So look, pause the video, use uh, the magnitude of A by the cos of that angle to work out that, verify that it's 20, and do the sine thing to calculate that and verify that's the case as well. Okay, uh, your answers are there as you can see. All right, so let's go back to that one. Let's do another one. I put it there. The two effects, one vertical, one horizontal. I move one of them so that I've got a right angle triangle. The angle there is 15.9. The magnitude of that vector is 36.4. And then if you use sine and cos, I'd ask you just to calculate and verify that that's 35 and that's 10. So these are important skills that you need to know and I would ask you definitely to do it and not just watch and listen to the video. Okay, <clears throat> the second thing we want to do is find out the angle if we weren't given it. So let's put the vector here. Uh, you can see anyway straight away the vector, the angle there is 63.4 and that's the angle, very important, that the vector makes with the uh, x-axis. In fact, it's the acute angle that it makes with the i-axis, if I was to be more specific. So it's that angle there, not the angle over the other side, or the angle between the j-axis and that. So it's the acute angle that it makes with the x-axis. And here's how we work out the angle. Well, we know the magnitude of that, right? We know the opposite, that's 20. We know the adjacent, which is 10. So you can use sine, cos, or tan to work it out. But usually I refer to just tan of the angle. And the reason I do that is because the vector is typically given in i and j form. So when you get the tan of the angle, it'll be the j component over the i component. And then you won't have to go away and work out the magnitude of the vector there at all. So the angle will be the j over the i. Um, sorry, the tan of the angle will be the j over the i. So to get the angle there, we'd get the inverse tan of 20 over 10. Inverse tan of 2 will actually work out as 63.4. Let's go once more. 15, 15. <clears throat> so to get the angle here, we know that the j is 15, we know the i is 15. So 15 over 15 is 1, get the inverse tan of that, and the inverse tan of 1 will give you the 45 degrees, which you get there. Okay, two more. Will you work that one out? So there's the j, there's the i, write the j over the i, <clears throat> and then get the inverse tan of it. And then you can check it, it should be that. All right, and the last one, Again, you have to pause the video, let's. So this one, j over the i, and then get the inverse tan of it. Okay, angle is there. Some of you will have noticed um, already <clears throat> that the j over the i is actually the rise over the run. And the tan of the angle is always equal to the slope, rise over run. So the slope, rise over run, um, and that's equal to the slope, so it's equal to the tan of the angle. And then the inverse tan of the slope or the inverse tan of the rise of a run will give you the angle itself.